we are facing a huge a fundamental evolution in the society. We are entering a world that is digitalized and will be more and more digitalized. So having a digital entity in your event is a must, in my opinion. You are not obliged to use it at every event, of course. You need a balance because too much of one thing will kill the other one, in my opinion. Right. But you need to know that it's there. You need to know that it exists. You need to know that it's an opportunity that you can present to your client. Welcome to Events Demystified Podcast, where we explore and demystify the world of in-person, virtual, hybrid event AV production and technology by sharing insightful tips, tricks and tactics to make your events a success. This podcast is brought to you by Tree Fan Events, a woman-owned boutique event production agency. And your host is Anka Trafan, a technical event planner and producer with almost two decades of hands-on technical experience in event production. Hello, friends. Welcome to another episode of Events Demystified Podcast. Your one shop stop for tangible, technical, and practical planning advice for anyone in the events industry. Today's episode is sponsored by Trifan Events, a woman owned boutique production agency. And I am your host, Anka Trifan. On the show with me today, I am super excited to bring Valerie Behe, director at the Vibe Agency, a event production and destination event expert with more than 20 years of experience in the event event management, design, and production of special events that communicate and achieve her clients' objectives. Originally from France, Valerie founded Vibe in 2004, an event design and destination management company in Miami, Florida, where she moved. And since then, she has produced thousands of events throughout US, Europe, Mexico, East Asia, and South America. Her roots give her a worldly perspective on events, and her passion for research keeps her informed on the latest event trends and their practical application to corporate events. You can learn more about Valerie, her agency, and all the things that she's passionate about by following the links in the episode notes. In the meantime, because we will have a very interesting conversation today that I hope you will tune in and stay tuned all the way till the end. In the meantime, I would love to welcome our guest in. I sent you some love here. Come on, ça va, Valerie? <laughs> Je vais très, très bien, Anka. I'm very well. Thank you so much. It's good to see you again. Welcome to the show. That was all the French I can speak, just so that you know. So maybe we should just stop at that, because the moment you start with more, I'll be like, Google Translate me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there it's... is some application. Kudo is a good application for translation in the virtual world. <laughs> there you go. I love that you're dropping the tips right from the bat. And you have a little puppy over there. That's probably oh a big goodness, puppy. Yes. You know, even my dog say, yes, mommy is right. Kudo is the right application when you want to translate. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I love it. Well, Valerie, it's such an honor. So good to have you on the air with me today. And this episode is actually part of the women behind the scenes in events and event productions. And I feel there is no better person to showcase and feature than you and get a glimpse in the future of events, in the metaverse, what it is and what it can mean for our events and what type of events it is for. We have actually run into each other quite a few times during COVID, during the virtual events season right after COVID started. And we partook in a few projects together. I remember VMEA in 2001, yeah. I, I 2001. feel like it was. Yes, yes. correct. But most recently, what was super exciting was connecting with you again at a recent Be Spash event in Detroit. Detroit. 
That's right. For Connect Marketplace, I was producing the AV technical details for the BizBash stage and was all behind the scenes doing all the things. And you were invited to talk there to be a speaker and uh, present the metaverse. And honestly, that really, really picked my interest because you've been such an advocate of the metaverse for quite a bit now. And I got so excited that I invited you on the podcast right then and there. And I said, Valerie, We've got to talk about the metaverse because it's such an interesting taboo topic sometimes in some circles and some event planners are still very afraid or totally don't understand the concept at all. So let's back up for a minute. And before we start demystifying what the metaverse is, I would love to bring our audience into your journey. Let's give our audience a little bit of behind the scenes into your story so they would understand understand where you're coming from. So would you take a moment to maybe elaborate a little bit on your career journey thus far in the event industry? How did you start? How did you get here? And most importantly, I guess, what keeps you here after two decades? Probably the metaverse. I think I know the answer to that. <laughs> no, uh, my career, um, I started, uh, I will tell you, I was, I called me the little black duck in, uh, in the pod, in the pond. I was in finance. I did my study in uh, finance uh, at La Sorbonne uh, in France. And I had the chance to do an internship. And my, I would say like uh, the mentor of this internship was telling me, Val, you are good in finance. You understand all the mechanism and everything. You can tomorrow build a company and you can keep it up to float. But it's not like you are shining and you are enjoying what you are doing here. So maybe you need to think about it. So I went back to France and I was thinking about it. And basically what happened is I decided to make a move and to change my career. So I built a staffing agency. And then from there, I was noticed by Disney who came to me and they were looking for somebody who had an experience on an amazing sports event that is happening in France called the Tour de France. So, and Disney was signing a partnership with them and they needed an event planner inside the company to manage everything. So basically I started my career then at Disney where I worked for them for a few years, managing 10 events per week. It was very intense. I think Disney was the best event school I've been to, to learn. And I produced a lot of events from all the uh, the Halloween, the Christmas before Christmas, the, uh, the anniversary dates and all that. And then from there, I moved in the, and I worked for Club Med, who is the inventor of the all-inclusive. And I worked for them for 10 years. So I worked for them in Paris and then I moved in United States. That's why I arrived in United States uh, back in 2000. And then uh, after five more years working for them here, traveling around the globe, producing events in United States and abroad, they asked me to go back to Europe. And at that time, I think I was starting to fall in love with United States. And I say, okay, maybe my next move should be to stay here. What can I do? The only thing that I knew was to do events. So basically, and I had the chance and an opportunity to sold an event concept to LVMH called the LVMH Open House. And this is how the Vibe Agency started. So now the agency is here for more than 16 years. And I'm happy. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be in this country. And I love what I do. I love your story. I love the backstory. I feel like we have a little bit of our immigrant story sprinkled through our journey. You know what's super interesting to me? And I know we're going to come back and discuss a little bit more your journey of resilience and making it through a recession. And then here we go. Like, I feel like it's deja vu again. My question to you is, how did you get picked up by Disney, especially as you're just starting? I mean, for any event planner that's out there that are hassling sometimes for years to even get a little bit of visibility was it just the right time the right person the right time like what was it that was so special about that because it's so fascinating to me Disney was a partner on one event where I had my staffing agency and mm -hmm. um, I don't know it was a coincidence I met with the executive and I I don't know I spread out and I say you know what I you don't know yet but I think you need me and the and the guy was looking at me and say who are you I say oh <laughs> 
I have this staffing agency. I will be involved. I'm also a partner with these events where you will be. I will handle all the security and staffing for the event. So definitely, I will be a very good point of contact for you for this event. And it happened like that. So then, of course, we work together the event with the Disney team and they see me on site. And then they came and they contacted me two weeks later and said, do you remember us? I think at the time we need you because we follow you. We know what you were doing. I heard that you have worked on the Tour de France. And I say, yes, it's true. And they say, we actually really need you because we are signing a partnership with them. So it was, I think, I was at the right time, yeah. at the right place. And I say the right thing. In this world, events, it's a world of communication. You need to be outgoing and you need to have a lot of empathy. You need to want to learn things. You want to meet people. So don't be afraid. They close the door on you. It's okay. Try to enter by the window. They close the window. Try to enter by the chimney. And at some point, you will enter and you will be in the space. I love the European uh, resilience that you bring to the conversation because that's a lot like me. But sometimes I feel like for some of my American counterpart event planners, that's a little too out there. Like you need to stay back. Like you're too ambitious. You're too aggressive. You're going too far. I'm like, what does that mean? No, doesn't mean no. No, it just means not right now or not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, I agree with you on that. Definitely. Yes. I love it. Well, as I alluded earlier, I'm super excited to dive into the metaverse and to demystify this topic with you on the podcast here today. Now, let's start with the beginning first, right? What is the metaverse and what does it mean for the future of events? So there is one thing that I want to say to all the event planners. And believe me, it's not that I preach what I say, but there is no substitute to face-to-face -face event. This is absolutely a certainty for me. But in the world, for anything, it's all a question of balance. And the metaverse is a world that for us event planners can be very frightening, definitely, because people are not feeling comfortable with it. Then also, I think it's a question of generation. But when COVID happened, we saw that the importance of all the internet, all the virtual meetings, the, the entire world changed completely, you know. So basically, the metaverse, it's, you need to think about like it's a big video game where it's a, a virtual world that what you see right now, I'm in front of my garden with the pool and everything. I close my eyes and I could be in the metaverse. This world will be like a 3D world now, but it's exactly representing what I see in real, but digitally. And we hear more and more about it because we're Zoom fatigue. We start to hear more about the metaverse because the world was changing. The retail market was adjusting. How can you sell in the stores when people don't want to go out anymore, when people were afraid to go out? So mm -hmm. basically, the retail stores, they were starting really to push the metaverse. But the metaverse exists before the COVID. They were here. So the only thing that we could say is that video games were a big precursor of kind of the metaverse. Okay? But the metaverse, and this is a big difference, because a 3D platform is not a metaverse. The metaverse is really live. So you can connect at any time, 24 hours. People from all over the world can be there. You know, it's not only for a certain type of people, only when you want to connect for a certain type of events. It's a big open world, but virtually. Mm. Is it clear what I say? Yes, you like it? So... If, if, you know, the technology truly allows to feel like you're physically at an event in the metaverse, especially, you know, with custom high definition 3D environments, as it's expected. My question is, as we're moving closer now towards this endemic world and the pandemic isn't necessarily impacting gatherings at the same level as it did in the beginning, right? Just a year or two ago, do we really need 
to be learning about the metaverse in a active manner, especially when we're still trying to consider virtual and hybrid right now? Do you feel like the need is there, especially for event planners that do want to be a step ahead of the curve, a step ahead of the times when, you know, most people, they just want to be in person, like you said. Yeah. But I will tell you, post-pandemic, in-person meetings are no longer, for me, the only norm in the event industry. So we are facing a huge, a fundamental evolution in the society. We are entering a world that is digitalized and will be more and more digitalized. So having a digital entity in your event is a must, in my opinion. You are not obliged to use it at Every event, of course, you need a balance because too much of one thing will kill the other one, in my opinion. Right. But you need to know that it's there. You need to know that it exists. You need to know that it's an opportunity that you can present to your client. So the event industry is, in my opinion, the last industry that has been faced its digital transformation. We need now to continue to evolve with uh, the evolution of the society, with what the consumer wants, what the audience wants, what the new generation wants. So we need to stay alert. So should the metaverse be part of your event strategy, you need definitely to think about it, to consider it, to analyze it. And I think, yes, at some point, it will be part of maybe one of your events in the year or two, you know, but it's part of your event strategy. It's a yes, I, I'm sure. And it can be used in a lot of different formats to do product launch, to do a fashion show, to do an award ceremony, to do a meeting, to do a team building instead to be in a two dimension, to do it in a three dimension. And if you have some people who cannot travel, the, the 3D environment and everything also will bring more decor, a nicer environment uh, where people can participate. So for someone that is just trying to wrap their mind around what, okay, so what is this at the most introductory level? How do you get into the metaverse? How do you create this digital identity? Are there some steps that you must follow to get yourself onto, like you said, it's not necessarily a platform, but to get yourself onto the metaverse? Yeah, you have some metaverse world like Decentraland that I took in Detroit where you need to go there, you need to create your avatar, mm -hmm. you need to surf into the world to learn how to walk. So basically, when you are in the metaverse, you can walk with the arrow on your computer, you go forward, backward, you can turn and everything. And after, you will see that in the metaverse world, you will have a lot of brands where you can claim like some goodies, buy things. Now you have some stores where you can go, you can see the store like if you were in person and you can choose some clothes, you can see them, you can even try them on your avatar, you can do a lot of things. And then in that case, you will need what we call a digital wallet with mm -hmm. some uh, crypto money and everything. So we, we are giving some course for people who start. Believe me, I don't play video games. So it was very new for me like three years ago when the pandemic hit, but when I see the opportunity, I say, you know, there is something here. We, I need to look mm -hmm. at it. I need to investigate more. And it's a huge opportunity because for us event planner, it's another type of event that basically we can work on with our clients. So it's good. It's, it's, it's almost like another offering, but now yes. having the ability to actually understand and master that you are a little bit ahead of the game. Yes, but the game will evolve. So I'm ahead right now, but everything, even in six months, will be yeah. changing and evolving. And that's why I say it's very important and we can talk about it later. But education is key for us, even planner. You know, if you want to stay ahead of the game, educate yourself, see what are the trends, try new things, don't be afraid. But Metaverse will not replace face-to-face. -face. You still need to have and you will have face-to-face. -face, and I, I love that. I have three face-to-face -face events coming in the next three weeks, uh, three yeah. conventions face-to-face, back-to-back. But in some of them, we have some virtual component. Definitely, we have some audience who are not traveling because they choose not to travel and we need to think about them and what can we do? So they could have the chance 
with the metaverse and all the 3D environment to feel like they will be in the city where the real event is happening, to have the feeling that they will be in the room, like it will be in person, so you can use yeah. all those type of things. But really, do not be afraid. The metaverse will not replace face-to-face. It's just one more option for company that will enhance and help them reach everyone they want for their event strategy. Absolutely. And for anyone that's confused, we're not talking about the Facebook metaverse. <laughs> that's not the same. And I know that, Valerie, you made that distinction during your talk. And I just wanted to mention it out there because some people will be like, well, I'm already on the metaverse on Facebook. <laughs> no, not yet. They are, they are building a metaverse world. And that's why also they changed their name to Meta. I think it's a huge marketing thing that they also did in a way. But it's good. Uh, they were ahead on that. But yes, they will have also a metaverse world that they are building. And that's why they hire a lot of designers uh, for the next few years to build that world. Because it's take time. It's take time. Absolutely. Now that we've learned that there is a place for a metaverse in your toolbox and in the future of events and even as an option or maybe, who knows, full-fledged event of the future, let's maybe dial in what a metaverse producer is because it's like you just mentioned, there is going to be a need for not just designers and event planners in the metaverse, but also producers, right? So what is the main role of a metaverse producer in an event planned and produced in the metaverse and what qualities or skill sets does one have to have in order to start pursuing planning, organizing, producing events in and for the metaverse? To plan an event in the metaverse, it's like an in-person event. First, you need to find a venue. Where will you have your venue? Then what it will look like. So you will need to work with the architect and the developer in the space that you have found and rented or buy in the metaverse. And you will need to design this. You will need how it will look like, choose your color, choose the type of furniture, choose all these type of things. So you will need to develop your world. Once you develop your world, you will have all the communication aspect uh, with the invitation to talk about it, to have all the world of mouth uh, about the event for all your attendees to be able to join then you will need to design exactly in the in-person event. You will need to design your program. You will need to communicate it. So you will have all the registration and all the communication behind that. And then after on the AV side also, you will have to produce it. So you definitely, like right now we are doing and everything, you are using StreamYard and we have all that in the back. You will need to also use those tools to make sure that you will have a nice show. You will have a, a speaker. You will have... a a nice video rolling when you will have some video coming. Uh, if you have a DJ with a concert, that the sound, everything will work. So it's really like a parallel world. You know, it's really a parallel world. But you will have to produce all these type of things and to help your client to guide your clients with these new tools that they can use. So it's almost like the metaverse is the higher end event where you're just going to create it from the ground up and build it to be uh, branded and to uh, represent your event well. A lot of work. It sounds like, you know, the metaverse producer of the future will have a lot of work on their hands. It's a lot of work, but events, it's a lot of work, you know, and we all know because in our industry, we know when we produce and people, when they just enjoy, sometimes the event is going like quick like that, but then it took us months to prepare it. And it's a lot of detail in the background. It's a lot of detail to produce. It's the women behind the scenes that make things happen. (laughs) Men and women. (laughs) <laughs> True. Only this season is about the women. I will definitely, you know, highlight some of the men as well coming up. But right now I'm focusing on all those women that many times, you know, they don't always get the recognition. So that's my purpose for this season. So let's uh, continue this very fascinating conversation, Valerie. But I will take just one quick moment first to acknowledge our sponsor. And then we will be right back with Valerie Behead, our metaverse expert. 
Before we move any further, I wanted to give a quick shout out to our main sponsor, Trifan Events, which is a boutique event planning and production agency that will come alongside you, offering personalized event planning and technical support, strategic event design, production and technology management, and flawless execution for live, virtual, and hybrid events. The team at Trifan Events is passionate about planning and producing event experiences that get people involved with true moments of interaction, engagement, and co-creation while offering white glove treatment throughout the entire planning process, enabling you to reach your event goals with the use of creativity, production tools, and event technology. Find out how Trifun Events can plan and produce your event become memorable, go to trifunevents.com. Super excited to continue the Metaverse conversation with our featured guest today, Valerie Behead, director at the Vibe Agency. And uh, as we are talking about the integration of in-person, virtual, hybrid, and the Metaverse, all the things that we do as event planners, managers, organizers, in most cases, we will always have to have several contingency plans, plan A, plan B, but even then... Sometimes there's still unexpected things that pop up on site, especially as we plan more in-person events on a much, much tighter timeline, I feel like, than we did ever before. How do you handle, Valerie, those unexpected surprises so that the attendees and sometimes even the client is not aware of all the behind the scenes, tiny little hiccups that we know about, but we don't want our attendees to know or even our client. Do you have any examples of times where you had, you know, a few surprises on site and you had to get really creative? Oh, yes. I was in a five-star hotel and they did a double booking of uh, the venue that I rented. Oh, no. Yeah. So unexpected obstacles are just the way they are. So they are unexpected. So it's what is important, it's having the ability to address them efficiently without freaking out is paramount. And it really goes beyond just finding creative solutions. One needs to be able to evaluate the situation. You need to be quick-minded to come up with a creative plan and get people to buy it and help out at the last minute. Be a good problem solver to rely on the ability to identify the fire versus the infernos, for example. And a preaching issue isn't always the one that is the most urgent, but the one with the biggest PR nightmare, potentially. So learn how to prioritize is one of the greatest skills you must have in order to be a good problem solver. So in this case, I had this double booking. I asked to meet with a person who was on the other side with the booking. And I went and I make a proposal that was able maybe to match what he needs and me helping me. Of course, I didn't have my venue at 3 p.m. as I was supposed to. I got it at midnight, but then I reorganized things and everybody was happy in the end and we make it happen. Then a second one is to be a good listener and make sure you fully listen the entire issue before trying to solve it in your head. And this was very important in my situation because I had a double booking in this venue where it happened during the winter conference in Miami. And I catch up in the sense that it was a famous DJ who had uh, the booking, the other booking like mine. And I end up just to throw a name. And basically, I knew this DJ. So, you know, it was easier because I knew exactly where I was, what I would be able to propose him in order to find a solution. And it mm -hmm. worked. Um, then really keep an open mind. So the solution is never what you want, but it's what is best for your client and the overall success of the event. So I was freaking out when I knew about it, but this will have not helped my client. So really I take a step back and I started to think about other options, maybe less ideal, but they would get the job done. So I was supposed to have at some point a rehearsal in this venue, but I didn't have the venue. So I ended up finding 
another space where I end up to have set up everything for my client and my client was able to rehearse, not in the perfect and where it was supposed to be, but my client rehearsed the way he wanted. So it, it was more comfortable for his presentation. And then you need to be a helper. Me, I'm one by nature. I never give up. I always try to find solution. And instead of just getting mad with the venue, I worked with the venue to try to find a solution. And I helped with my team. And even if I was up night, very late to make it happen, you know, they saw that I was committed to help. I was part of the team because anyway, the damage was done and they need help also, you know. Then really always be curious, ask questions and to push to get answer, you know, be curious on what's going on, how it happened. And like that, if that's what I was telling you. Because I was curious, I ended up finding out that the person that had the double booking was somebody that I had the chance in my life to work with. Mm. Maybe it will help me. And then the last one was really get the big picture. An even problem solver needs to operate on multiple levels with a 360 degree view causes and effects. So you can't make a solid decision without weighing all the option and understanding everything involved, in my opinion. I love it. I feel like you just gave a crash course on if you want to become an event planner, listen to this five minutes of what I just said and really, really listen to this five minutes and get it. <laughs> I agree with you. If I'm planning 101. <laughs> I would love to go back for a moment to discuss the type of resilience and what does resilience in business really mean? What did it mean for you? How did you manage to keep grinding away and be successful during low and hard times, especially during the 2008 recession and then COVID in the context of potentially being faced with now yet another recession that everyone is talking about, especially here in the US? What did you do differently than others that uh, help you during those hard times? First, one thing is I push on education for me and uh, my team, and then to educate our clients on what was new in the market, what we hear about. And this is exactly what we did recently with the, when COVID hit. We were pushing ourselves to make sure that communication still need to be there, how we will communicate, how we will be in touch with our clients, how they will be in touch with themselves, their client, their internal team and everything. I say also, look what's going on in other industry always, because, you know, like in the video game and all the metaverse, as I say, it e existed. And you have people who keep be passionate playing video games and they engage. And I have kids at home. So I was like, wow, they can make it. And you have also adults, so they are making it. So really look at other industry and the way they are managing things and focus. I say, you know, in terms of crisis, there is people, they will tell you definitely cut on marketing, cut on marketing. Me, I think I did the opposite. I over communicated. I was keeping to be positive. I was communicating on what I was doing and we were producing our own good vibe and then inviting people and see that things were working and we helped turning clients and we even gain new clients. Uh, there were crises throughout decennies and generation and everything. Crises exist. And we have to be resilient because I think it's in our human nature to fight for things. And we try new things also. Don't be afraid to fail. I have one thing that I say. You have the right to make one mistake a day, not twice the same. <laughs> so just imagine you can make 365 mistakes in a year, but you will learn. You will grow with that because you will push yourself and you will push your boundaries. So don't be afraid, I would say, you know. I'm a fighter in nature, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I didn't choose the easiest way, the easiest road, but I think, you know, I wanted to accomplish something by myself. So with Vibe, I already overcome the 2008 crisis and I overcome this one. This one was harder. And I will tell you because I think right now the globalization of the world is everything is going so much faster in 2008, when the crisis hit here in the United States, I was lucky because I had all my European clients and the crisis didn't hit Europe at that time. 
So for two years, I was surfing on the wave with my European clients when my American clients were very, let's say, very slow motion. But when this crisis hit, it was everybody all at the same time. So that's why with the team, we went directly in the virtual world and with using and doing Zoom events at the beginning and then going with 3D platform, going with the metaverse. And this is what kept us afloat today. And uh, thanks God, I would say. And then the fact that we were keeping our mind busy, active and challenging. Uh, you know, we didn't lose the spirit. And right now when it's rebounding like crazy, before we were producing events with a year or two years or six months in advance. Right now we are producing convention for like 150 or 200 people in like a month and a half. Yep, so the timeline... Timeline like... change. So, you know, we have to be much more up to speed. We are to be very organized. So challenge yourself in productivity. Check your productivity. How can you improve? What the team can improve? How better work together? All that is very challenging for all of us. But this is what keeps us growing, I think. And um, it's interesting, you know, let's take it all for an opportunity. Let's not see always the negative stuff. And let's stay positive and uh, we will grow all together. Absolutely. Well, one mistake a day. I like that. <laughs> I will definitely take that home and remember it. <laughs> and I will say, not twice well, the Valerie same. said... <laughs> Not twice the same. <laughs> True. Not twice the same. Don't do the same mistake twice in a day. This was such a fantastic conversation, Valerie. Thank you so much for sharing so much of your learned experience and wisdom. And in closing, from your experience of planning and producing more than 13,050 events, it sounds like the count is now, for Fortune 500 companies, I would love to hear your one last piece of advice. And also, where can our audience connect with you if they would like to learn more about you, what you're up to, what you've got cooking for, what's coming up next in the future? How can they get in touch? Yeah, so definitely they can look for us online. We have our website where they can contact me very easily www.thevibeagency.com we are also on instagram uh, the vibe agency we are on twitter we are on facebook we are on linkedin uh, we have uh, this website and i would say my last piece of advice just enjoy what you are doing wake up every morning and uh, have a smile on your face and on everything that is uh, waiting for you for the day keep going really keep going and we have an amazing industry it's changing we evolve but there's so many things to do and i will not change for or anything right now. Thank you so much for sharing all of this. I will have all the links in the episode notes. I know you mentioned something about a potential metaverse course coming up. I will have the link and QR code for that as well if you'd like to register. Valerie, thank you for this time together and keep rocking on in the metaverse. <laughs> thank you so much right. for having me with you today, Anka. Uh, I hope to see you soon. And uh, thank you, everybody, for listening to us today. I hope it was inspiring. Bye. Okay, friends, this is it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and will give the metaverse the attention it deserves. I hope you will stay curious, as Valerie said, and continue expanding your learning in this area. And if everything that you learn and everything that you know, you know is based on today's episode from what Valerie had to share and everything that she's imparted as far as knowledge goes, the good news is you're still way ahead of the curve right now. So make sure that you listen to this episode and re-listen if you must. Thank you so much for staying till the very end and make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out on the next episode airing out every Friday, every week. Until then, stay healthy, fit, and curious. Thank you for listening to the Events Demystified podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment to review it, rate it, and share it with other event professionals that could benefit from it. Connect with us on social at Events Demystified Podcast. We would love to hear from you and what you're up to. If you'd like to learn more about Tree Fan Event Services and find out if we're a good fit in supporting your event, can we help your event be successful with a 20-minute free consultation? Link in the episode's notes. 
Thanks for tuning in.